Hello, it's Maggie. I, I'm looking at the chart of Jim Morrison today. Uh, he's part of the 27 Club. You know, that, didn't, that lived until age 27 and put their mark on the world. Uh, a group of about three, well, there's probably more than three or four now. Uh, Kurt Cobain was pretty young. But he was a Sagittarius. He had his son in the 10th house in Sagittarius. Um, so the 10th house is your career on the MC. Uh, he was a pretty fiery guy. He did a lot of traveling. He got around a uh, very fi fiery, dynamic personality. He has <coughs> uh, Aquarius on the, on the Ascendant. Uh, just a lot of friends, a lot of groups. Uh, they're generally humanitarians. A little eccentric and strange. <laughs> like that song, people are strange. Um, yeah, the Aquarius can be a little kooky. Uh, so the ruler of his ascendant is <coughs> Uranus, and it's in Gemini, another air sign. So he's very airy. He he has more planets in air than the other elements. Um, so he also has Mars in Gemini, and they're in the fourth house. So um, Uranus and Mars are practically on top of each other in conjunction. So it just <clears throat> uh, gave him a lot of a lot of fire to he had to, literally had to express himself, and he did uh, through po oh he wrote beautiful poetry, which he turned into music, and um, was very very adept at it, very, <clears throat> very adept. It just, flo it just flowed out of him, having Gemini, the Mars and Gemini, the fourth house, and Uranus too. It's just like he picked up ideas, just, he just picked them up. You know, they were just in the air, all around him, and he's ruled by air. But it, air is very mental, very quick-witted and mental, so he was always thinking of something. And in the fourth house, he, you know, he had a lot of his ideas at home. <laughs> and his home was probably uh, pretty dynamic and changeable as well, with Gemini there. A lot of talking, that's for sure. Um, or singing. Um, let's see. So to look at his music, he has the moon in Taurus. And a lot of musicians have a Taurus imprint. So to, to have one of the lights in Taurus of the third house of communication, he, he was a, a great singer with a beautiful voice, beautiful voice. So the, the moon definitely is that signature. Uh, on the entertainment house, the fifth house, he has Saturn and it's in Gemini. So that, that just made him steadfast and tedious. Um, to communicate, I mean, he, he felt a very strong need to put his ideas out into the world, which he did. Some of his songs were political, and, uh, you know, you just, he, very Uranian, you never knew what he was going to come out with, actually. <laughs> I think he got arrested on stage once for something, uh, a Plutonian act on stage, because uh, he, he has Pluto on his Pluto in the seventh house uh, of his, actually, well, it's in the seventh house, but it's in, uh, it's in Leo, which, you know, is self-expression, entertainment. So he, he, he came off as very uh, scorpionic, because Pluto rules Scorpio. Um, yeah, so in his relationships were colored that way too, probably very intense, very, um, and he has the North Node there too, so I think he was meant to be an entertainer or to, or to have a very strong need for self-expression in some form, uh, so he used it musically, so in that respect, he was living out his, his North Node and Pluto and, and Leo. In Leo, in the seventh house, and it's it's intercepted with the sixth house. So it's still his work, his work, and his partnerships, and you know they're all kind of tied up together. 
Jupiter also, <coughs> Jupiter also he has in Leo. And uh, just wanted to make sure. So that just really expands his his career, and people were very, very much drawn to him. He had this attraction. Uh, he had this attraction, especially with Jupiter there in Leo, and <clears throat> very, very strong need to express himself. Um, to express himself, and just let, like let people know he's he's here. You know, he's here. And uh, there's Neptune and Libra in the eighth house, and he expressed Neptune. It's, one of the one of the indicators of musical talent, I think, because it rules Pisces. Pisces, Pisces. A lot of musicians, have, you know, <coughs> Pisces or Neptune or prominent uh, Taurus in their charts or Venus. And he, so he has Neptune in Libra. I've seen that several times. And, um, so he uses that for music. Um, and it's in the eighth house of. Um, you know, money, I mean, joint finances, and uh, it's in the eighth house of Scorpio, but he does have Libra there, so he's using it musically. Um, he has Venus and Scorpio. Let me just make sure of that. Venus, yes, he sure does. He has Venus and Scorpio right on the mid heaven in the ninth house on the MC, so. Uh, he used his sexuality in his career um, with Venus there, make him very attra <coughs> attractive, um, help to pr promote that very intense personality. Um, so that definitely helped him. Um, yeah, and traveling and uh, since it's in the ninth house of Sagittarius, I think he had. Like sometimes theology can be Sagittarian. Not, not necessarily theology, but he had a lot of ideas, I think, about um, you know, humanity. You know, not, not really politics, but social, socially, you know. Um, yeah, with Venus there, he could create his own religion, you know, and Scorpio. I don't know. He just had a dynamic pr presence, so with, with that. Very, very intense um, musically, and that's why he got ahead. That's why he got ahead because he had Venus and Scorpio on the MC as well as the Sun up there. So that certainly was a benefit to him and Neptune. And Neptune. Mercury. Mercury is in Capricorn in the 11th house, so that, uh, <coughs> that helped with ground his, um, give him some, some earth, you know, to help him materially, or to, to make him a little more practical, or help him to, uh, you know, help him further his career, actually, to, he, Capricorn in the 11th house would help him further his career through his communication with other friends and groups and causes and, you know, <clears throat> the whole 60s thing, 70s thing or whatever. But yeah, so he used, he used Mercury in his career to get ahead socially in groups and, and he did, he made his mark. And those, those planets are all on the mid heaven, pretty much all on the mid heaven. So that, that puts him in the public eye. Um, yeah, so he, <clears throat> he does have a lot of trines, a lot of trines. I just I read this article on the <clears throat> 27 Club and it said that they had a lot of trines in their chart. And yeah, you can see about, yeah, there's about 12. I mean, I'm not counting that, but there's about 12. Um, and a lot of sextiles as well. 
he, his elements were um, in fire. He had Jupiter and Pluto in his seventh house, making him a very intense personality in a relationship. Uh, he was very, very sexual, or came across that way, and intense. Uh, at the same time, very sensitive and perceptive and intuitive. And he has the sun in a mutable Sagittarius, which is a fire sign. In the air, he had a lot of air. He had Neptune, that would be musicality. The Senate, Aquarius, which rules communication. They're very mental, very mental and quick-witted. Uh, so he was always having ideas, just always having ideas. Uh, and some of the stuff he wrote probably never got published. He must have had mountains of, of lyrics, poetry laying around. He had um, also Mars, Saturn, and Uranus in him, all in Gemini. So that would be writing, writing again, writing, singing, communicating his ideas, a lot of ideas. And they were all creative, creative, because he had Leo on the uh, seventh, sixth and seventh house. Leo self-expression. Self he had a very strong need to, to express himself, that's for sure. Earth, he had Mercury in Capricorn, and he had the moon in uh, Taurus, which is, again, another signature of, a, of music. I think it gave him a great voice to communicate with to the world because it's in Gemini, in the house of Gemini. But the moon in Taurus gave him a beautiful singing voice as well. So he did have a lot of indicators of a, of a great music, musician. And he died when he was 27. So um, great artist. Yeah, great artist. Anyway, thanks for listening.